this is Jen from Pressure Cooking Today, flying solo today. Um, and I'm just here to talk about the Instant Pot Rio. Um, when we did our last uh, Rio video, I'll put a link in the description, um, we got some confused viewers asking like, why didn't you talk about the hearts? What's going on? And Barbara and I were so puzzled until we realized that Walmart has released a Walmart exclusive uh, Instant Pot called the Instant Pot Rio Chef Series. And so we've got the, the old school original Rio and the Rio Chef Series here side by side so you could kind of see a comparison. If you own the original Rio and you want to know how to use it, just skip to the original Rio video in the description. Uh, but if you have a Walmart exclusive Rio Chef Series, um, let me talk about the differences for you and then uh, I'll show you how to get it up, get it cleaned and get it running in your kitchen. Um, and by the way, this is not sponsored. This is just our honest review. So the original Rio, uh, the, as you can see, the lids are completely identical. Um, they have the little push button switches on them both. They both angle the same way, uh, angle the steam back a little ways. Um, and when you unlock them, the undersides of the lids are identical as well. Oh, this one doesn't have a ceiling ring. Um, the lids are identical in every way, but the housing is very clearly different. As you could see on the original Rio, there are a lot more presets. Um, on the Walmart version of the Rio, there are fewer presets. Um, as far as cooking functionality goes, um, the presets just run a preset cook time. They don't actually know like, oh, I'm cooking eggs in the pot and the eggs are done now. They just know, hey, the average egg is about this big and needs to run for this long. Um, so it's not a big uh, difference. I actually like the simplicity with fewer presets. The one feature that the original Rio has that the Walmart Rio Chef Series doesn't is a yogurt setting. So if making homemade yogurt is one of the things you're really excited about to use your Instant Pot in the kitchen, the original Rio is a better choice. But this one has everything the other one has otherwise. Um, they've moved things around a little bit. The, uh, let me see. These little indicator lights that say warm and cooking and preheating, they're below the timer over here and above the timer over here. The buttons for adjusting the time and temperature are in the middle here, but they're on the edges over here. The biggest difference I think between the two, they both have identical um, plastic housings that are um, really nice, uh, but the biggest difference is the Walmart Chef Series Rio comes with a non-stick uh, pot. It's a coated with ceramic, whereas the original Rio comes with a, a stainless steel pot. However, the two pots are completely interchangeable. So if you are interested in owning a, a stainless steel pot, they sell that separately so you can swap those out. Let me put them back the right way. Um, so yeah, the, I think that's it for the, the, the differences. Um, and then the Chef Series also has four favorite buttons, the little hearts that you can save for recipes that you cook all the time. And that is not on the original Instant Pot Rio. So um, I'm gonna set this one down for a minute and center this guy so we can show you how to get your um, Rio Chef Series up and running in your kitchen. All right, I'm here with the Instant Pot Rio Chef Series from Walmart. It's the Walmart exclusive version. Um, I kind of gave you a rundown of the side-by-side. -side. Uh, let me talk about like getting it up and running, getting it cleaned for the first time so you can get started cooking. Um, you want to remove the lid and remove the pot. And then you've got the housing right here. This housing, you never, ever, ever want to get liquids in there. Um, when I am in a hurry and I know that I tend to be scatterbrained when I'm rushing. I'll put like a, a wooden spoon over the top of it just as a visual cue like, hey, the cooking pot is not in there. Don't dump your liquid in there, okay? Um, when you're cleaning it up for the first time, you wanna just make sure that no like plastic stuff from the packing box is in there. And uh, you'll just use a damp cloth to wipe it out. Just damp, mostly dry. You don't want it dripping. And then you will um, hand wash this. I know that uh, you can put this in the dishwasher, but I prefer to hand wash, especially when it's nonstick. I feel like it lasts a little longer. 
Barbara puts it in the dishwasher. So what works best for you, absolutely go with. So you'll wanna wash this sudsy water, dry it out. You'll notice the cooking pot, it's domed, so uh, it, you can't use it on the stove top. Um, it just sits inside. And then you've got your lid. Uh, your lid comes with a silicone gasket installed. You wanna just pull it out before using. And you see it's really flexible, it's a food safe silicone. Uh, I like to just get some sudsy water in my sink, get it really well into the, even like the inner grooves um, and then rinse it real good and then dry it really well with a towel. And then um, this right there is your anti-block shield and this is your float valve. So your anti-block shield, the first time you're using it can be a little bit tricky to get off. This one came off easy. Um, it's just this little silver cover and it prevents, like if you're cooking oats, it prevents oats from foaming up and getting into this kind of screw thing. So you wanna wash this off, um, wash the lid with soapy water, put this back on, you want it to snap into place. For the float valve, it's got, you can see the top of it peeking out there. When I like to wash it, I will turn it upside down and I'll use my finger to push the float valve up a little and then I take off this little mini silicone gasket that it comes with, and I'll let the float valve just fall into my hand underneath it. Um, your pressure cooker won't work without these two pieces, and so it's, I am a little bit paranoid about losing them, so I, once I take them out, I keep them in my hand until I put them back in. So I will wash them both with sudsy water, rinse them really well, and then I immediately put it back in the lid. I don't set it down because I can be a little scatterbrained. So just the same way I did before, line it up so that the little ridge goes in first and use your finger to hold it in place and make sure it's pushed on all the way and that it, it stays in place when you put that down. And then when you put your silicone gasket back on, you wanna make sure you, you choose a starting point and start pushing it in. Run your finger around and it usually will go in real nice. You wanna make sure that the whole gasket is firmly in place and that there's no gaps because if you start cooking with like a small part of it still raised, the steam is gonna come out the side and that's one of the most common reasons why uh, pressure cookers don't work. So I always, when I put it on, I'll still double check, make sure it's all the way in place and then we're ready to get cooking. Um, so 99% of the recipes that we use on our site use the saute button and the pressure cook button. I know there's other presets, but again, since those just run a, a preset cook time, they don't know how thick your meat is, they don't know what altitude you're cooking at, and uh, so it's not an exact science. So to saute, we'll select the saute button, it's just right here on the front. And then you've got, it automatically comes with a 30 minute cook time. I never change it because I'm never sauteing for more than 30 minutes. I just kind of leave it at the default and um, you need to press start. Um, another difference from the regular Rio is the start button is a symbol. So the little green triangle is your start button. And you'll see that this um, little preheat light up here came on. Um, that's just to let you know that it's preheating. Uh, just like you would on the stove top, you don't want to add any oil at this point while it's cold because then by the time the pot reaches the correct heating temperature, uh, your oil will scorch. So you just kind of want to wait while it's preheating and then this little uh, cook light will turn on when it's time to add the oil and you'll be ready to go. So we'll just wait a minute. So uh, when I saute, I generally saute most of my things on high. Um, I rarely change the saute setting. Barbara, on the other hand, she really likes to change to, she'll saute her meats on high and she'll do like onions or uh, a simmer, she'll switch it down to medium. So if at any point you wanna change the temperature, um, you can just use these little temperature buttons to go, it'll say it's currently on high, it'll to go to medium and low. Um, and you can do that at any point in the cooking process. If your pot, if you're cooking and it's boiling up too fast or you can tell things are about to scorch, you can just lift the pot up off the heating element and that'll give you some time to stir real quick and uh, adjust it before you return it back to the heating element. So while it's preheating, you'll see it says on. It should switch to hot briefly and then it will start to count down on the cook time. So I'll just give it a minute so you can see what that looks like.
All right, so you heard those beeps and the screen displayed hot and now it started to count down. So at this point you would add your oil, your butter, make sure things melt and then you can add your onions or your meats to get a nice sear. Uh, a ceramic pan will not give the same kind of sear that you would get in a stainless steel pan, but you can still get some nice browning flavor from it and it will still kind of soften the taste of the onions and make things a little more mild. So it's still a step I recommend. So we'll cancel that. Red X is a cancel. So now we'll move on to pressure cooking, my favorite part. Um, so you've got your lid. Again, make sure your gasket's in place. To pressure cook, you're gonna need some clear liquid, whether that's water or chicken broth, apple juice, whatever. Um, you'll need some sort of a clear liquid. So um, I've got a cup of just plain water. <laughs> we were just sauteing, so you heard the, the heat. Um, so we pour the water in there and then you would add whatever ingredients called for in your recipe. And then the lid has a little, little arrow right here that says open this way, close this way. And there's a little notch on the edge of your pressure cooker. You want to line the arrow on the lid up with the notch and then turn it to close it. And the lid automatically went to sealed. So we're good there. So now we would just hit pressure cook. And then we could choose our cook time. So I'm gonna take it down to a minute. Ooh, this one does a zero minute cook time, which means it reaches pressure and then immediately stops the heating element, which is great for pressure cooking broccoli. We'll take it to a one minute cook time and then uh, we'll hit start. So once again, it's the display reads on and this little tiny uh, orange uh, preheating light has turned on. So if you're cooking and you realized, oh, I forgot to adjust the cook time, you can do that in the middle of the pressure cooking session. You can push the time button up or down and you can adjust it up or down. But you have to make sure you hit the start button after you've adjusted the time. Okay, so you heard the beep indicating that it switched to the cook setting and it's starting to count down that time. Um, once the recipe has finished its cook time, um, the pressure cooker will switch over to the keep warm setting and you'll see that keep warm light come on and then the counter, the timer will start to count up. So I like that as a easy shortcut way to know how long it's been since uh, the cook time ended. A lot of our recipes, we uh, call for a mix of a natural pressure release and a quick pressure release. So a natural release is when the cook time ends, you pretty much do nothing, you walk away until the float valve drops on its own and then you can un uh, remove the lid and you can uh, continue with your recipe. A quick release is when as soon as the cook time ends, you slide the lid from sealing to venting and you'll get a big jet of steam that'll come out. So you wanna make sure that you don't have a face or hands or like cupboards, pendant lights, anything where the steam is gonna go. Um, because I've tested this one before, I know the steam doesn't go exactly up, it kind of goes up and back just a little bit. So um, when it's time to release, I'll step out of the way. Um, but like I said, a lot of our recipes combine a natural release and a uh, quick release. So we'll say, allow the pressure to release naturally for five minutes and finish with a quick pressure release. And what's happening inside the pot during those five minutes of natural release is that any foaming of ingredients is kind of coming down. So I'll go ahead and release the pressure, slide from stealing to vent. And you can see it's a pretty, Strong jet of steam. I don't know if you could see it on the video. So you could hear the float valve drop down and that means at this point the lid will unlock and you'll be able to uh, remove the lid. Um, so we'll go ahead, twist it. Um, there'll be drips on the bottom, so I like to shake them off over the pressure cooker. And then you'll notice the lid has these little fins that fit right into these handles on either side. So you can just put your lid right there and then you can continue stirring or preparing your, your meal uh, while you finish. Um, so that's it for pressure cooking. So one more thing I wanted to talk about, um, and that's the favorite settings. These are really nice if you have um, specific foods that you make over and over and over again. I know rice is a staple at our house. We make that several times a week. Um, I know some people make pet foods in it, um, 
whatever. It's got four preset settings that you can do. So say I wanted to make rice. Um, at sea level, rice has a three minute cook time. At our altitude, it needs a four minute cook time. So what I would do is I would select pressure cook and then I would adjust the time to the four minutes I need. And then I would press and hold this favorite button. And then it'll read set. You have to hold it for, it says three seconds, but it feels longer than three seconds while you're doing it. So then it's set. And then you can hit start. And it will run that preset for you. And then next time when I'm ready to make rice, I just have to hit the one button and start. And it remembers everything for me. So that's a really nice feature of the Instant Pot Rio Chef Series from Walmart. Um, so I think that's everything. If you have any questions about using this pressure cooker, let us know in the comments. Um, we will uh, include a link in the description to some of our favorite easy beginner recipes to help get you up and going in your pressure cooker journey. Um, yeah, and I hope it, it's, a, it's a fun little machine. I hope that you enjoy it. So if you have any questions, make sure to let us know and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks so much.